Hi all. For my second video today, I want to ask the question to your YouTube audience. Do you think the kids today are getting much stronger at chess? And why would that be? Do you think it's the availability of online databases, playing sites, engines to practice it against, and a general communication of games? To demonstrate um, one kid getting very strong, recently in the Miami Open, there were several grandmasters competing, and it was actually a 13-year-old who won it, who actually already has the IM title. His name is Ray Robson. Maybe he's a new fisher. So the next few years we'll see, you know, does he have it, uh, you know, that, enough, enough talent and strength to, to get, you know, into the 2500s, 2600s, 2700s later. So in this game, in the Miami Open, he was playing against IM Renier Gonzalez, who was 2549. So he plays E4, and Renier plays D5. It's not such a bad system, this, because um, the Australian GM Ian Rogers has played it very successfully and revitalized the line. One of the ideas is to kind of transpose it into a solid variation of the Karakon, with Black later playing for C6 and E6. It seems that Black really wasn't given the opportunity to aim for that setup. I actually lost a game against Andrew Ledger in this in, in a long game once as well. Um, it can be a very solid setup with Black playing c6 now. So the Queen can usually come back, you know, to c7. And then Black, you know, develops his bishop to either f5 or g4 with a solid game with e6 later. So this isn't such a bad system. And Black was really demolished in an instructive manner. So, bishop d2, black perhaps took a slight liberty of not uh, moving his queen. Ma you know, maybe he should have moved it to c7. Um, he didn't seem to mind the discovery. I mean, let's have a quick look. Queen c7. Is there a problem with this? Ribka likes knight h4. So, taking on g6. And now maybe playing g3. It supports bishop f4. Maybe, maybe that's uh, slightly better for white. But, um, okay, so black took the liberty of leaving the queen on a5. So knight d5. But on the other hand, you know, he's exchanged off white's knight on c3. Is this good or bad? Also, the queen on f6, potentially, isn't that going to be useful if white castled kingside? You know, potentially it can come to g6 at some point in some relations. You know, bishop d6. Maybe even later h6. Bishop d6, g5, I don't know. So, um, white, though, Ray played queen e2. So, actually, first of all, he's offering the c2 pawn. And second of all, he's giving the opportunity now for himself to castle queen side. So, making that queen kind of irrelevant on the king side. And he's also reserving still the possibility of bishop g5. Let's have a look at... So, bishop takes c2. That's immediately punished, I expect, with something... But apparently not bishop g5. Bishop g5. Just check. And actually black would be better here. Apparently, because queen f5. Okay. So what does Ribka actually give here if black had taken on c2? Just bishop c3. So stopping that bishop b4 check. And now white's threatening d5. As well as the bishop. So the bishop... Either moves or is protected. So say, say protect the bishop. Castles, knight d7. And white's got um, a lead in development here. And now white can still proceed perhaps with um, either knight h4 or even d5 with advantage. So okay, so black wasn't tempted to take that pawn. He played knight d7. So white was given the option now to castle queenside, which he took. So potentially this this knight manu this knight to d5 it's left the queen on f6 which is now more of an irrelevant square and the black king more crucially is still in the center but even so you know black usually is solid enough to um, be able to castle but in this game he wasn't given any time by his 13 year old opponent who played now bishop g5 and now blasting through the center with d5 so. Black took on c4 and now played e takes d5. So that allows rook h e1 check. Now intuitively, yeah, it looks as though there's a storm brewing here. Because is black 
if if Black has just you know a little bit more time to castle, he'll be okay. But now comes what would seem to be yeah you you would consider this move, but it really does need to be calculated um, quite a lot to play. Uh, I'll let you try and guess the next move. I'll give you five seconds, starting from now. The move Ray played was Rook takes d5. So let's look at um, just c takes d first. Queen b5 is a mate and one. So bishop e7 is the critical move now. So leaving the rook and pre and attacking that bishop on g5. So if bishop takes e7 here. So does black want to play king takes e7 or c takes d5. Say king takes e7. Then check, and black is in severe trouble, because if king eight, queen takes b7, he's getting dismantled. If c5, rook takes c5, much better for white. So basically, in this position though, so black plays c takes d5, and okay, black's king is in the centre, but white has some vulnerabilities now. The king's threatening to munch that bishop on e7, so it's seemingly forcing queen b4. And not only that, the queen is eyeing that c2 pawn, which uh, Renier can now also pressurise with rook c8. So it doesn't seem that clear anymore. However, white still played a crushing continuation from this position. He first played knight d4, so he's protecting against the threat of mate in one, that c2 pawn. But is he leaving now another set of tactical vulnerabilities? Remember, this king's attacking his bishop. He's got that c pawn issue, which he's now dealt with. But what about this unprotected um, rook? Well, it's only, these two pieces are only protected by the queen. So, if black can use that overloading somehow, it would seem quite dangerous for white. So, after the check, king b1, black now plays a5. So is the queen getting overloaded? It's having to protect the bishop on e7, the rook on e1, and potentially the rook on uh, the rook and knight on d4. If if white's not careful, black will have queen d2 forking both of them. Ray in this position though senses black's tactical vulnerabilities and plays queen takes b7, seemingly you know allowing a really crushing move. So he's uh, threatening now potentially you know knight takes e6 and, and, and queen takes c8 but he's letting in the black queen and this is a sign of I believe a new Fisher because in a lot of Fisher games Fisher as we saw from some of the recent videos you know he was allowing the opponent's queen to come near his king but it was all very precisely calculated in order to further his own attack and here was a magnificent move that was played. I'll let you see if you can spot it. I'll give you actually 10 seconds starting from now, or you might want to, you might want to stop the video. Okay, so white has a lot of threats to deal with. The rook, the knight, his queen's potentially um, stuck White's played here, bishop b4, and all the problems are resolved. The bishop is, is protecting now the rook with this attack on the queen. And white is now unleashing this pin on the bishop, immobilizing that. So it's not really now protecting the rook on c8. White is threatening queen takes c8. So black, in this position, didn't really want to move his queen back, because just queen takes c8. So let's see, queen takes b4 as queen takes c8. He, he took on b4 with his pawn, allowing queen takes c8 like that. And after king e7, check, king e8. White now solved his knight and rook issue by playing another very neat, very elegant move, making the game look as though it was really easy. But, you know, really all of this, you know, perhaps was precisely calculated. And that is the real strength of the game. It's, it's been made to look easy to crush a 2550. Knight f3, just protecting the rook, attacking the queen, 
And again, renewing the threat now of queen c8 check, followed by queen takes h8, because white doesn't have to worry about the rook on e1. I, it's a remarkable game. I just, I'm, I'm very impressed with this 13-year-old. Uh, so maybe he's going to become a GM, you know, by the time he's um, 15 or maybe even earlier. Magnificent game. And Ray Robson won the Miami Open. This was just one of his um, great wins from that tournament. So watch out for him. And it does also raise the question, you know, are kids getting stronger at the game? Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.